Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. this morning from Trinity United Methodist Church in Little Rock. I'm Roy Smith, the pastor, and it's our joy to share this time of worship with you. Some of you may know friends who would like to be part of the service that may not have access to internet or use Zoom or, or use Facebook or face or uh, what do you call that? YouTube or, or go on the website. So we have a number that we can give to them and they can go and listen to it. This is this week's uh, password. You can call them now. And we're going to begin setting up a plan to have a kind of phone tree to reach those people every week because it changes every week and we update it. If you have a friend that would like to listen because they can't get it on a computer or television, call us at the church. We'd like to help you. Also, remember uh, these opportunities for prayer. Uh, one is to send in your prayer request at prayer at tumclr.org, which is our website. And we hope that you'll feel free to do that. Uh, one of the other prayer and ministries we have are Upper Room Devotional Magazines. We have those at the, at the church office and information about how you can access the, that online. We continue to try to communicate as best we can. And a couple of great opportunities for doing that each week are Tuesday e Blast, which is our prayer request and a prayer for you to use in your own life. And then on Friday, news about the church. And we send a monthly newsletter. If you're not getting these, give us a call. One of the things we've done is to open our church building on Tuesday morning from 9 until noon. So you can come into the sanctuary and spend some time in prayer and silence. We think it's a really good thing. Hey, it's what this month? It's macaroni and cheese. This is the, 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 the food that we're receiving this month for our food pantry. And thank you. I already see a lot of it, but there's room on the shelves for more. One of the ways that you can share this service and help us to reach others, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, is to press share. Uh, and others will see that and know that. Thank you so much for the way you give and support our church financially. You're, you're using, uh, some of you, the online uh, option through our website at tumclr.org. And others of you are sending checks or bringing them. Tomorrow, we start our first ever staycation, vacation Bible school. And one of the things that we've done I'm so excited. Each morning from 9 to 10.30, we'll be live streaming stories and music, explanations of the crafts and activities that you're able to do where you are. If you were able to register ahead of time, we've already given to you your box of materials to help you, but you can use things that are around the house. So we hope that you'll join us for Knights of North Castle. I am so excited about this. Welcome to this time of worship together. I invite you to listen now to this beautiful prelude as it draws our hearts to God in this time of worship together. Thank you. 
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. I invite you to join us as we sing our opening hymn this morning, For the Beauty of the Earth. Let's sing together. Well, good morning, good morning. So glad to see you all. I have just had the best week this week. Um, and there's been so many people helping. We've stuffed uh, craft packets and um, letters in um, folders and then made deliveries. And one of the very best part of making deliveries of the Vacation Bible School packets was I got to see a lot of you and a lot of your parents. And that's so great. Oh, I can tell that you've been out in the sun and drinking lots of water because you've grown so tall. And um, yeah, you have a lot of wise things to tell me too about what's been going on. So that was really awesome. One other thing, I got to talk with your parents some, and we talked about um, their joys and comforts being at home with you 
and also there are concerns about going back to work and for you guys to start school. So, you know, I think it's um, a really perfect time for us to be doing Staycation Bible School because we'll be looking in our Bibles and we're going to be um, reading stories about God and God's people that had troubles and what they did and what he did for them. So that'll be, um, I think, really uplifting. It's also going to be a fun time um, to have Staycation Bible School because we'll be doing um, some fun things and kind of forgetting about our woes. We'll be having music and crafts, science projects, and um, some games. So it'll be very cool. It'll be very, very cool. So we will be um, searching each day for the King of Kings and the um, and faith in Christ and the armor that he provides and that protects us in this world. So our scripture verse today, I wanted to share with you and I'd like for you at home to stand up please. Um, and if you wanna stand up here too, that's awesome. And we're gonna learn our, um, our banner verse for uh, Staycation Bible School, okay? So our banner verse is, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his power. But it's so cool, um, Ms. Karina showed us how to do American Sign Language. So we're gonna learn that right now real quick, so we'll be um, a little ahead of the curve um, when we start tomorrow. So be strong, like you got your bi boxing um, fists up, be strong. And then Lord is a L, and you put it on your shoulder and bring it down to your waist. Isn't that cool? Lord. So we're going to be strong in the Lord and the strength of his power. Isn't that awesome? Okay, let's do it one more time. All right, you ready? Be strong in the Lord and the strength of his power. Praise God. Awesome. Good job, you guys. Good job. That'll be so much fun. So, um, really good. Let's go ahead and um, we will, uh, I'm going to ask a blessing over all of those who worked and are still working to um, make uh, Staycation Bible School possible, and then ask um, God also to um, bless that time with us. God of our strength and power, thank you for the blessing of being able to come together and worship you. Thank you for all our church family get th that give us so much time and talents to praise and serve you. Especially I ask for your spirit and your filling peace on those who have shared so much for these children so that they may experience the wonder of your love and your power. Father God, I ask for your presence and spirit to be upon this Vacation Bible School as we dedicate it to you and for your glory. Amen. Well, as we come to God in prayer this morning, we come and our hearts and, and minds and prayers are indeed, as Ann said, with those that will be participating, our children and our thanks for those who've helped make this happen and for others that will discover us uh, on, our, on our website uh, and find a blessing that's there. We also continue to live, and yesterday, once again, uh, across the country and here in Arkansas, we set records, the bad kind of records, as we continue to see the pandemic among us. So it's important for us. I know that it's hard sometimes for us to keep our diligence, but it's important for us who care to do those things, wearing masks, keeping distance, doing those things and making those changes so that we can help to flatten curves. 
uh, and find relief. Because one of the things that's happening is we see the continuing number of folks in our area uh, going into the hospital uh, and, and getting uh, more and more ill. So we want to continue to truly remember them uh, and all who are there. Let's go to God in prayer. Oh God, we give you thanks this morning uh, for this chance and opportunity to be together in worship. We're together uh, as we hear your word and are bound, uh, bound in it, as we're able to share uh, music and scriptures and the word um, through this means of technology. We're grateful for that. And pray that as we come and offer ourselves in praise and adoration to you, as we come and lay before you and stay before you and, and admit to you those times that we have fallen short of all that you have called us to be, Lord, we seek your forgiving love and power. We seek your strength and your hope uh, and are thankful for ways that you are sustaining us through these tumultuous and unusual times. And Lord, our minds are particularly uh, grateful and our, uh, our minds are on the hearts of children that will be joined together in our own uh, Staycation Bible School this summer, learning together, having that, uh, that opportunity to learn and, and, and be part of that in so many ways, and to know how important we believe it is for them to know the story, your story, the stories of your people living in faith and hope and finding the strength they need in you. Lord, we do come before you today and, and lay before you uh, all who are on our hearts. We've shared a list of prayer concerns as part of the bulletin for today, of people that are particularly on our minds, but there may be others that we didn't mention but hold in our hearts. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers as we offer uh, those persons to you, knowing that your grace is always sufficient. And Lord, open our eyes and hearts because we may often be part of the kind of tangible grace and love that you send into others' lives. So Lord, fill us with wisdom and insight. And we pray that you will particularly be with those who lead us and who seek to make decisions and plans that we can find ways to do that safely. Uh, as children begin to plan, you know, school activity for the fall, as we begin to try to find ways, may we be struck inside ourselves with uh, the kind of compassion and desire to care for others. And we offer all of our prayers. We offer them to you in the name and the spirit of Christ, our teacher and the Lord of our lives. He taught us when the disciples asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. He gave them this prayer, and he gave it to us, and we pray it to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
did. Well, we're continuing to look at uh, our, our spiritual ancestors, as, as I called them. Uh, and we begin that journey, you remember, in Genesis uh, chapter 12, as Abraham hears this call of God to go forth uh, to the land that God will show them. And God is going to give them a land and a people, and through them the nations of the world will be blessed. And then, of course, after many years, and Abraham and Sarah coming to old age, their son Isaac is finally born, heir to the promise. And as he becomes a man, they send an adult, they send and find a wife from their people, their kinspeople and homeland, for them to marry. And then we come, as we will in the story I want to look at today, as we begin this next generation, their sons, Jacob and Esau. A tremendously interesting part uh, of this as we see more and more uh, deeper and deeper understanding of what it means to live uh, as God's people in relationship with him and our relationships with one another. And so we see today the beginning of that new uh, next uh, generation, if you will. So here are these words from uh, Genesis chapter 25, uh, verses 19 uh, through uh, 34. These are the descendants of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, who was the daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean, from Padan Aram, the sister of Laban, the Aramean. So Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren, couldn't have children. And the Lord finally granted his prayer, and his wife Rebekah conceived. She conceived twins, and the children struggled together within her. And she said one day, if it is to be this way, why do I even go on living? And so she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said to her, there are two nations in your womb. Two, pe two peoples born of you shall be divided. And one shall be the stronger than the other. And the elder shall serve the younger. When her time to give birth was at hand, there were twins in her womb. The first one came out all red and his body like a hairy mantle, so they named him Harry, or Esau. And afterwards his brother came out with his hand gripping Esau's heel, and they named him Grabby, or heel grabber, Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore these children. Now when the boys grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter. He was a man of the field, but Jacob was a quiet man who lived in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he was fond of wild game. Rebekah loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking a stew of beans and lentils, Esau came in from the field and he was famished. And Esau said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stuff. I'm famished. I'm starving. And so he was called Edom. But Jacob said, first, sell me your birthright. Esau said, I'm about to die of hunger. Of what use is a birthright to me? Jacob said, swear to me first. And so Esau swore to Jacob and sold his birthright. And Jacob gave Esau the bread and lentil stew. And Esau ate and drank and rose and went on his way. And thus Esau despised his birthright. This is the word of God for us. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh God, we pray that as we see your hand at work uh, in these scriptures, as we see you finding a way that this promise continues, that we will see within it truth, the kind of truth you would give to us that allows us to see more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly in Christ. Amen. You know, when I read this story, you know, 
You got twins fighting before they're born. You got mom loving one, dad loving the other, and there's no mystery about it. Everything's clear about it. I think, like, are they living in, in William Faulkner's, you know, Yonktopakoffee County or something where we all kinds of intrigue is going on? But the story you re remember begins with, with Abraham, and in his best moments, he has that sort of serene, powerful confidence of faith. And then Isaac is finally born and comes to adulthood, and it seems to be from all story we read a great success as he carries on the promise. And then this next generation comes, Jacob and Esau. There's going to be conflict, and it will be sort of the order of the day in many ways for their lives together. They're sort of polar opposites of one another. Esau, the kind of kind of good old boy out there hunting and his daddy's go get it boy I'm proud of you and his mom's son Jacob always sort of scheming always wanting more well the interesting thing is that the story comes as we join it uh, we join it uh, in, in a moment of, of sort of crisis Abraham and Sarah had one of these as they continued to go through all these years knowing that one of the central promises of God is that they were going to be the father and mother of a great nation and they had no kids well lo and behold for 20 years the same thing happens for Isaac and Rebecca it's a story that happens often in the Bible and what's so odd and interesting is everything seems perfect son of the promise, Isaac, marries women from his kinspeople and homeland, all of them with perfect sort of genealogies, perfect sort of bloodlines. Everything's perfect except we don't have any kids, and we got to have them. Well, in these days, we got to have a boy. So for 20 years, they prayed and they prayed and they earnestly sought and knew that there was nothing they could do. They didn't fully understand the way you and I might about the biology of infertility. All they could do was wait and hope and pray. They prayed for a son and they got two. And somehow there's this interesting foreshadowing before they're even born, which drives Rebecca to say, I don't even know if I can go on if this is what it's like. And then they're born in this sort of dramatic fashion uh, children almost of conflict. As, as Esau comes out first, so he'll be the firstborn. And there is Jacob holding on as if he were sort of getting, a, trying to have a, a, a kind of free ride or a better deal because that's what he's always going to be working on. And their parents had their favoritism. It's like Jacob was born for conflict. Jacob was born, and the stage seems set as these two boys arrived. That somehow or another, the promise is going to continue because God made it. But there's going to be some sort of strange reordering in how it all comes to be. Somehow it's not going to all pan out the way we've always done it. What do they call that? Conventional wisdom, I guess. Although I don't know that conventional wisdom is what it used to be. Because the world seems so strange and so different at times. But things about this story turn a lot of things on our heads. Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, seemingly the perfect ones to be the parents of them, wait so long. And finally, it is through God's grace, nothing that they did, it's through God's grace alone that this future generation is born. There aren't future guarantees just because we want them. There's no sort of grasping they can do. They had to wait and pray and cast their lives on God alone. That's the only thing they could do. And in our own life, when we come up against those kinds of situations where working harder or being smarter or trying one more time can't seem to solve it, we too recognize that in our own barrennesses that we must depend on God alone, that the universe is not in our hands to be in charge of, 
but it is in God's. And falling our, laying ourselves at the, into, the, into the mercy and the love and the plan and the promise of God is the way that we find our way forward. I think that's the first thing, because I think so often our conventional wisdom is if we just try hard enough, long enough, if we just get the right stuff, if we just get enough of it, somehow everything's going to be right. But what, Jake, what Isaac and Rebecca help us to see is it was only in relying on the mercy of God that they would find their hope. Now, the other way that the way we've always done it gets turned in their heads, we get a little uh, sort of uh, premonition of it or we get sort of a foretelling of it. When God speaks to Rebecca, I don't know if I can keep going, what's going on inside of me? And, and there's two nations. And the weaker will, the stronger will serve the weaker and the elder will serve the younger. That's not how we do it. The way we did it, even if you were twins, the first one out is the eldest. And the eldest child had a birthright. It's a good deal. It meant they got twice as much as everybody else when the inheritance was, was read. And they also got to be the leader of the family. And they got to be the one that people look to as the eldest and the most in charge. And so it is that everybody knew that that's how it works. Except somehow God isn't convinced it has to be the way we've always done it. And so what happens is that the story uh, unfolds and we see this strange kind of interesting episode. Esau's been out on the hunt, didn't catch much, had a good time. He's been out all day and he's starving. He comes in where Jacob is cooking a nice pot of sort of red lentils kind of matched Esau's red hair. You know, he had red hair. He keeps stirring. And you can just sort of see it unfolding as old Esau walks in. What you cooking? Red lentils. Your favorite. I sure do wish I could have some of that. In fact, I'd give you anything. For that's what's going through his mind. I'd give you anything to have some of that. And you could just see Jacob going, anything? The thing I've always wanted, Jacob thinks, is the birthright. To be the main one, to be the leader, to be the one that gets the double share, to be the one that stands as the heir to that promise of our grandfather. Anything? Anything. I'm starving to death. How about your birthright? Well, what good's a birthright if I starve to death? Right here. Swear to me. I swear. What good's a... Yes, I swear, I swear, I swear. Now, now we go around saying stuff in our lives. You know, people, like, get caught saying one thing, politician, then they say another thing, and what do they say? I misspoke. Whatever that means. But in, in, in the... In, in the biblical world, when you spoke words, a promise, a blessing, a curse, when you spoke your words, they were real. And you didn't just say, I forget about it. They had a kind of, well, I'll tell you what it's like. It's like my grandfather, I remember, used to say to us, your word is your honor, right? And I don't know if he, he rarely probably in, in business deals he would have made, would have done more than sign maybe one sheet of paper. He would not have known what to do with, when we buy cars and houses and things and sign and sign and sign and sign and sign. And so when Esau speaks these words, they become real. His oath has been made. And now in this strange kind of foreshadowing of God, willingness of God to let it happen, and Jacob tampering with things, suddenly the youngest son will so serve the eldest. But that's not the way we've always done it, God. And God says, I'm not bound by that. You know, I think part of what is going on here, and I don't think God is punishing Esau. I mean, Esau's sort of short-sightedness may be punishment enough of it for him. But I think that there is a sense that even though he's a kind of conniving rascal, 
Jacob that this conniving rascal appreciates something about the promise. And, and so what God is beginning, and we'll see the, more of this next week, is that we don't always have to be perfect to be God's. That God can use us and God will love us just where we are and just where we begin. Because you see, part of what I think we begin to discover and see what we'll see more and more clearly across the pages of Scripture and finally in its clearest form for us in Jesus is that it's really about God's grace and about God's choice. And it's really about God being able to say, I do choose, I do choose to be in a relationship you, with you. His son will tell us to remind us that the last will be first. One of the great preachers of his in the first century will tell us that sometimes foolishness or what seems like foolishness is the wisest wisdom in the house. And, and so it is that we all begin to discover, and I think Jacob in this moment and in others will help us to see that our well-being is a gift from God and nothing else. That's grace. One of my favorite authors, Frederick Buechner, says, it's all in the house. That's what grace is about. It's not what you do or don't do. It's what God does for us. Now, one of the things that I like about the stories about Jacob is that Jacob is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But God is able to use Jacob. That encourages me because sometimes I'm less than perfect. And maybe, just maybe, God can use me as I know he will use you with his grace and his love at work through you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, hear this word. Amen.
church. Amen. Let us pray. God, we are grateful people for the gifts that uh, are ours that you give to us and that we share and pray that all will be used, uh, used for your glory. And God, for the, the gift of music in this time, we give you thanks. Uh, as it draws our hearts and lifts our spirits and souls to you uh, and to lift us from the, the, the humdrum that can, that can set in in a time like in the one in which we live. And God, we're thankful this week for everybody that's helped make our Staycation Bible School happen. May the lives of children be blessed, and may uh, they know the depth of your love more fully. We pray in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to invite you to share with me this affirmation of our faith, the words of which are the Apostles' Creed, uh, one of the oldest creeds of our church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen.
together forever. Amen. Thank y'all for joining us today. This is for Matthew and then Dave over here. Dave did a great job doing the editing on the Bill Craig video that we're going to replay here in just a second. And uh, just to make you aware, we have a phone number that you can give to people that don't have internet that we post about 30 minutes ahead of time on Facebook. And uh, hopefully we're going to get a phone tree going, but it's a where they can phone in and listen live to the church service. So. Uh, just y'all have a great day and thanks again for watching. We're going to play the Bill Craig video now. Not my sister, not my brother, but it's me. 